Kuzuzampo, welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Sunam Pem. Our top stories this week. His Majesty the King grants da to newly appointed officials. The Agriculture Minister says there is no problem with the export of agricultural produce amid the pandemic. And some say the Prime Minister and the opposition leader violated COVID-19 safety protocol during the election campaign in Bhutha. Now the details. His Majesty the King granted Da to appoint the Governor of RMA, the Home Secretary, two Zongdas, six Drangpans of District Courts and a Gup of Bumdilingyeok in Tashyansi. Dashu Penju is reappointed as the Governor of the Royal Monetary Authority. Samsi Zongda Sonam Wangil is the new Secretary of Home and Culture Affairs Ministry. The new Dagana Zongda is Duba. He worked as the Director of the National Assembly Secretariat. Former Deputy Auditor General Chimi Doji is the new Chemgang Zongda. Dechen Wangwo, who was the Ramjam at the Notary Public Office in Thimpu, is now Lunsi Dangpin. Thongje becomes the new Dagana Dangpin. He was the Ramjam at the Gilifu Court. The new Tashiangsi Dangpin is Singe Wangdi. He was the Ramjam at the Finseling Court. Jimmy Lode is the new Mongol Dangpin. Before his current appointment, he worked as the Ramjam in Jomo Sangha court. Sangye Chidup, who was the personal secretary to Her Royal Highness Princess Sonam Dechen Wangchuk, is now Gasa Drangpin. Kile Tenzin, who was the director at the office of the Attorney General, is now the Shemgang Drangpin. And Puptinle takes charge as the new GUP of Bomdilingyo in Tashiangsi. Tandon Fenso, BBS News. Residents of Jomotsanka Dungkak in Sandu Jonkar are not happy with the work progress of the Jomotsanka Samrang Highway construction. Earlier this year, the government had promised to complete the highway within two or three months. But seven months since, Jomotsanka and Samrang Gyoks are still not connected. Works were initially started in 2016 by the Department of Roads but was handed over to Project Dantak last year, who started working on the highway in April this year. Since the construction of the 58-kilometer highway began in 2016, the Department of Roads were able to clear around 47 kilometers. Works were then handed over to Project Dantak towards the end of 2019. Project Dantak started working on the highway from 26th April this year and were carried out maintenance works over the newly cleared route which was damaged by bad weather. However, the remaining 11 kilometers of the highway still remains to be cleared. Officials say heavy rainfall as well as the national lockdown hampered the works. Meanwhile, the locals remain dejected. <laughs> When works resumed, residents were all happy, but Project Dantak is not clearing the road fast. Without any internal road connection, the public of Jomotsanka are struggling. We thought the highway would be ready soon, but work progress is too slow. We are not allowed to travel through the Indian highway these days, so the public is facing lots of problems. We are not able to go anywhere. We do not even have a good hospital here, so it will be difficult for patients to get treatment on time. We are also not able to meet our relatives and other Dongkhaks who are sick. Currently, Project Antak is carrying out wall construction and road base course works. However, the road construction missionaries have all been withdrawn by Dantak. 
Meanwhile, the Department of Roads is carrying out the construction of bridges over the Kalokola and Nunai rivers. With the border's gate closed and no internal road connection, Jomo Tsangkadungak has been isolated from the rest of the country for about nine months now. For Kilowanchu in Samdrup Jonkar, Bimasaldun Singh, BBS News. Meanwhile, during the Meet the Press session, the Prime Minister said there is lack of manpower at the Jomotanka Samrang Highway construction. This, he said, is due to the pandemic. The Prime Minister added the pandemic has created difficulties in bringing in foreign workers. Moreover, there is a lack of interest from the Bhutanese job seekers as well. <laughs> Sungjin, the communication app promised by Druknam Rupchokpa, is yet to be ready as the government has failed to develop it even today. Member of Parliament from Minbi Senkar Choki Gelsen questioned the government on the status of the app and free Wi-Fi during the question hour session of the National Assembly. The Information and Communications Minister said works were delayed as the ministry had to reprioritize their goals due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Developing Sungjin, a free communication app, was one of the 25 pledges in 120 days made by the government. Even after completion of two years in office by the government, the app is yet to be developed. To this effect, Member of Parliament from Minbi Zankar questioned the government on the status of the app. <laughs> In response, the Information and Communications Minister Karma Dondan Wangdi said the works got delayed as the ministry had to reprioritize towards development of some of the information management systems. Information management system. Information management system. Some of the information systems developed are drug trace app, entry and exit gate system for the immigration sector, and vegetable marketing information system for the agriculture ministry. Meanwhile, the Information and Communications Ministry plans to explore other viable options available to develop the Sungjin app and put it up in the Lhenge Jungtok for further discussions. This is Sring Dandup, BBS News. The Agriculture Minister informed the National Assembly that the pandemic has not affected the export of agricultural produce. The issue of sale and export of the produce has been persistent in the House. This session as well, the National Assembly members questioned on plans and strategies to improve the sale of farm produce amid the pandemic. <laughs> To this, the agriculture minister said there is no problem in selling the agriculture produce. 
Sanam getting in the suit. Chitsong Japni Roda, Nadin Beni Roda, Gara, the Tablam Namana Sutin de Givera, the Gara, the Tata Sensu Givana Gara, Lejim Jodi, Sushnila, the Benedigachi, Sanam the Nasal Hangagi Katulu, the Damachera, the Tunghong Disu, Borse, the La Pisa Disu, the Azijima, Nyam Jogi, the Sajamato, the Chitsong Japni Gidunudi, the Namasame, the Sajalang of Me, Sushnila. String Children MP from Karyurung also questioned the government on their plans to improve buyback policy. Sanam Tinke Su, Shungi Luk Nunigi, Siji, buyback policy, say, she took Nanu, say, Shunibe. Dima say, Tare Shungi, Kelang, Nindang, Chigja Nishupe Nanlue, Kadibi Kiti do, say, Shuachin. Sanam Tinke, Sanam Tinke Su, Tomgi Gonse Tardu. The new song Tapnibe, Kedi, Udibe Sachiroe, the Dato Banaya, Sijudi, Laglendi, Lejumbe, Tap Matsubigi, Kangil Du, Sishunibe, the Yanjin, Amachara Gahab Nankanagi, Netang, Sonjurgi Tablam Tapmaji, Yanjin Chisong Chapnigi, Tablam Tapmaji Bebe, Sonjur Tabra Matsuba, Lisobachin, the Dela Shungi, Nyonidi, Anidi, the Baybacks, and the Anuka Ugoni, Sessionilla, Tap Chara, Chabigi, Netang Hibdalu, Lale Tapnigi, Tablami, Sessionilla, Tablam Dual Habigi, Tablam Dashudi, the Machi, Sonjur. Tablam de Sujapur Pidigibe, the Missagi Gonser Gadechi Dada Top Zonidi in Sessionilla. The government during the pandemic has bought perishable vegetables from farmers, and this, he said, had cost government 24 million newton. Sengishism for BBS News. People living with HIV or human immunodeficiency virus say they face less stigmatization these days compared to the previous years. Earlier, people living with HIV faced stigmatization and discrimination even from their family members. They said less stigmatization is attributed to awareness. There are some 741 reported HIV cases in the country. Awareness programs have helped people living with HIV. The HIV teaming Womabe, the Midachi got ten degree, Chichi don't tadi, go out to Bissinalo, the Charachuri, Lashima Bossi, Sishunibila. I let him like egg them, Rambutam Moya Ganeka Centre Mara Bosigotu. I'm happy and living peacefully at the Luxem Community Centre. Friends and family members also do not discriminate us since they understand the illness. I got the disease in 2006 and appeared on television in 2011. For now, I'm healthy and can work as well. Um, eleven <laughs> As the country marked the World AIDS Day, health officials said people still don't know much about HIV AIDS. I think there's uh, definitely a certain level of stigma that ministry, not just from the community, but within the health system as well. So we are working uh, very closely um, to sensitize our health workers and uh, our care providers so that uh, uh, the people living with HIV do not get stigmatized. This is an initiative that has been going on for quite some time now and uh, so that has significantly helped in terms of reducing health uh, stigma within the healthcare setting. But still, the majority of the people do not come to test. The Health Ministry also launched HIV self-testing and new antiretroviral medicine. Srinzam, BBS News. 20 new HIV cases have been detected in the country in the last six months. Of this, 10 are male and rest female. All of them acquired the infection through unprotected heterosexual intercourse and there was no mother-to-child transmission reported. One of them is above uh, 50 years of age, while the rest are aged between 25 and 49. Among the new cases, 12 of them were diagnosed through voluntary counseling and testing, four from medical screening, three through contact tracing, and one through the antenatal clinic checkup. 54 HIV cases have been detected this year alone. 
The Chekurta by election is over, but it has left a bad taste among some netizens and people across the country. They say the Prime Minister and the opposition leader, two of the most influential figures in Bhutan, did not completely observe COVID-19 preventive protocols during the campaign. Besides face masks, no other protocol was followed during the 24-day campaign period. Though common forums which were conducted by the Zonkak Election Authority were carried out as per health protocols, party campaigns went about without physical distancing, sanitizers and hand-washing facilities. This has not gone down well with the public, especially those affected by the pandemic restrictions. <laughs> The <laughs> Lamten Lapja Cachira de Vero, Machiduinisilla, the Mopalin City, the Mahusi Shinuilla, the Chess of Chip Dosum Chiberella, economic sectors, not the Nachigi Namsemi, contributes to Rangachi and Gitakats Besunimes Shinui. The Prime Minister said campaign meetings had to be held through public gatherings as the door to door visit was practically impossible due to a large number of households. Naturally, Digida Tundi Major Semidi, the Messia to Athere Pompomo, the Taregi Netangi. The opposition leader blames the Prime Minister for the lapses. The Prime Minister said the gatherings have been conducted after assessing the risk of transmission of the disease. The Dochi Hunle, the Junjungi, Naragi Gordon Tab, the Hema Gutsudan Digi, Konga Chipeta, Beda, Silojonime, the Tadaume, Sessionibilla, Tanami Semi, the Chichi Gupio, Zimipak Dibe, Begopsale, Maton, Zora Terigi Dingachara, Median and Niji Minos, Median and Niji Mi, Setam Chilmachara Gishebe, the Tlansingile, Yukalava Dumidus, Tabu Nabu Deva Chica Tabdu, La Chica Be, La Sachica, Jomigi, Mingum Tansa Benedigi, the Conchacha Nana Niji Mi, Sengachi Soi, Hunle, Soi, Ketchus. But the health ministry still requests people to wear masks, clean your hands, and maintain physical distancing. For Keep Chun Bumdang, this is Tanit Finso for BBS News. The COVID 19 situation has affected Gelifu's Mandarin export. It delayed the business by almost a month. Normally, by this time of the season, the export would have picked pace with 10 to 15 truckloads of Mandarin already dispatched to Bangladesh. Exporters are just beginning to construct their depots, a job that would be done a month ago during normal times. Much time was lost figuring out how to go about with the business amid the pandemic. The exporters could not strike a deal with their Indian counterparts conveniently. But more importantly, they had planned replacements for foreign packers. According to the exporters, bringing in Indian packers was expensive and time-consuming. They tried hiring skilled laborers from other districts such as Paro, but most refused to come at the last minute since Gelifu is a high-risk area. 
Today, they are managing with the locally available workforce. Skilled packers will be able to do the job quicker. It takes time to learn a new skill and the result may not be as expected. We are planning to guide our Bhutanese workers with quality packaging. If 10 skilled Indian laborers could be approved for each exporter while we bear their quarantine expenses, our Bhutanese workers could learn the skills from them. And gradually, we will not have to hire Indian laborers. The main challenge for us this year would be packaging, since our people are not used to it. This year, the exporters will also have to employ Indian drivers for Bhutanese trucks to transport Mandarin till Bangladesh. The drivers will be managed as per the export norms, in effect due to the pandemic. Transportation is another issue. Earlier, Bhutanese drivers would reach the consignment till Bangladesh. But now, hiring Indian drivers for Bhutanese trucks for the job could be inconvenient. If the trucks break down along the way and the drivers fail to inform us, truckloads of Mandarin worth five to six hundred thousand could go to waste. In between this host of issues, the exporters hope to begin exporting Mandarin by the first week of next month. Gelefu exported over 10,600 metric tons of Mandarin last year. For Garmondi in Sarpang, Sring Dandup, BBS News. For some 170 nuns of Kinga Raptin Nunnery in Tongsa, to continue living at the present location is becoming riskier by the day. Unusual cracks have developed on the walls of their homes, the main temple and around the campus since last year. And these cracks, they say, are widening gradually. The nuns do not know how the cracks developed, but they are wary of its consequences if left unattended. The nunnery established in 1968 is situated a few meters below a cliff and it has students as young as four years old. When the cracks grew bigger, we informed the district administration. The concerned officials came and inspected. Even the Mangdichu Hyder Power Project Authority helped ascertain the damages and restore them. But the cracks appeared. If this is the situation in winter, I cannot imagine the risk in summer. So we decided to shift. <laughs> We have 170 nuns living together. We worry when we see the cracks growing. We fear the nunnery might collapse while we are asleep. According to the principal, big cracks and displacement of boulders are now visible on the cliff above the main temple. We frequently inspect the cracks on the cliff, which are widening every day. With the nunnery located below, there are chances of the rocks sliding down. But despite the looming dangers, the nuns have no proper place to shift. The nuns blame the Mangdichu Hydropower Project Authority for the cracks since the project's 13.5 km tunnel runs beneath the nunnery. Following the report of the reappearance of cracks, the Zonghak Disaster Management Committee along with the project authority carried out the second round of joint inspection last week. The report is submitted to the Department of Disaster Management for further directives. Meanwhile, the mitigation works and additional geological study in the Nunri area are on hold due to lack of experts in the district. This is Basa, PBS News, Tonsa. That's all for this week. Thank you for joining us.